As we begin a new 30-year period in the life of Lake Avenue Baptist Church, from 1931 to 1961, we begin with the Houses of Worship, or in this instance, Webster House. Addie Motley grew up at 57 Ambrose Street. The 57 Ambrose Street property extended a full block back to Spencer Street. It included not only the main house facing Ambrose, but also a garage and another frame house that faced Spencer Street. During her childhood years growing up at 57 Ambrose Street, A.O. and L.B. Motley, her parents, engaged Ailing DeForest to design gardens that would extend from behind the main house to Spencer Street. DeForest was raised in Pittsford, New York, and he studied at the Taylor Business College and Mechanics Institute, now known as RIT. In 1896, he was hired by William Parse as a draftsman, and the following year he joined Olmsted and Elliott in Brookline, Massachusetts. After several employment changes, he opened up his own practice in Rochester. He designed gardens for George Eastman, Harley Firestood, Horatio Warner, and among other notables. He died in 81 in 1957. Here we have a number of images of the gardens at Webster House. In due time, Addie married Edward A. Webster. From the time that the major remodeling of the 1891 church building was completed in 1918, there was a desire to build what was dreamed of as a parish house, and by the 1930s it had pretty much concluded that the dream would not be realized in the near future. On April 22, 1938, Addie died. Shortly after, the church was informed that she had left her From property 1931 to LABC to 1961, because she knew that the church continued would continue to be a vital, a vital part of the ministry of years of Lake come. Avenue Baptist Church. Addie was not a member of LABC, but we a lifelong with member of from the, the early Presbyterian 1930s. Church. The junior and after choir, consideration of the boards and the church of the youth church, orchestra. a resolution to accept the house gift was presented on June 29th at a congregational 1932 meeting for consideration. The church choir the group one voted presented the annual spring recital. And a week later, on April 29th, church choir group two presented the second annual spring recital. And we know that one week later, on May 4th, church choir group three presented its second annual spring recital. And it was during that same year, from 1932 to 1933, that the choir published a book of rhymes written by choir members. Perhaps some of those writers are pictured here in the 1933 Young Adult Choir. And on November 11, 1933, the Westminster New York Choir Fall Festival was held at LABC. In addition to a variety of choirs, we have the church orchestra pictured here. And on November 20th, 1933, there was a concert and a reception held by the choir. Here's a picture of that choir from 1933, along with a list of membership. Some of these individuals may also have participated in the 1934 spring recital that was held in the Montgomery Room. Not long after the December 16th presentation of Handel's Messiah, there was a plan that was laid for the Westminster Choir to give a concert the following Sunday on January 15th. Here we have a 1935 picture of the Junior Choir. In this image, we have the singers planning for a Vesper service music, and it wasn't that long after that following Easter, the Goodwill Tour of Eastern Cities was announced. On March 4, 1935, the LABC Choir offered a concert series, a recital. 
On April 22, 1935, a 1,400-mile concert tour began with a convocation at CRDS. Sixty choir members boarded two buses bound for seven cities in Pennsylvania, one in New York, and one in New Jersey. In this image from August 1924, the LABC Quartet sings at a service in Maplewood Park. And it was following the June resignation of LABC organist Lawrence Frank that Mr. Marlowe Smith began as music director. It was under his leadership that on March 27, 1936, the first annual concert by the LABC Orchestra was held. On April 18, 1938, Professor Gustav Lehmann led the Rochester Chapel Choir in Mendelssohn's Elijah at First Baptist Church, and the choir then made a tour of six Midwestern cities. Two years later, on February 25, 1940, the orchestra gave a concert at the Mount Olivet Baptist Church, Ralph Talbert, director. On March 21, 1940, the choir presented Brahms' Requiem for the Monday Thursday service. In May of 1940, the orchestra gave its closing concert of the season and St. Mark's Italian Baptist Church on Bay and Niagara. Not long after that, the orchestra began its rehearsals for the seventh season. In March of 1942, it was suggested that the availability of a librarian to follow the care of the purchased music must be investigated, and a few months later, on May 17th, it was noted that the music library was in splendid condition due to the work of Miss Amy Dewey. By 1944, it became apparent that the organ needed to be rebuilt. An entirely new instrument was out of the question because of the cost and because of the unavailability of needed materials due to the war effort. Therefore, it was in 1944 that a capital campaign had begun entitled the Memorial Organ Fund to honor the LABC members who had been killed in war to date, those missing in action, and those who had been honorably discharged new organ would require a reconfiguration of the sanctuary. In March of 1947, Colgate Rochester Divinity School Chorus presented a concert at LABC. And that following year, the Women's Society presented the LABC Choir in concert. Of interesting note, in May of 1948, it was counted 13 pianos in the church building. On December of 1949, the LABC Choir presented a concert to assist an injured minister. It was in March of 1950 that the Central Presbyterian Church Choir provided the music for the Federation of Churches Union Lenten Service held at LABC. The LABC players presented Dust of the Road. Here in November of 1950, we have a professional recording made by the choir that went on sale at the annual church bazaar for $1.50 each. 200 were sold and 350 were ordered. In this same spirit of recording, the choir recorded several hymns that were used on WHIM's Sunday evening worship program, and the children's worship time on WHIM featured the LABC Junior Choir. And on June 1, 1951, 18,000 people attended a music festival held at the Highland Bowl led by Marlo Smith, director of the Intercity Choir. And here we have information about the 40-voice Colgate University Glee Club that presented a concert at LABC in 1952. Following a few very busy years of concerts, in 1955, there was a dedication of the Baldwin Grand Piano, a memorial to Helen Barrett Montgomery. This emphasis on music is clear from the 1958 summer music schedule for Sunday morning services. Through all the ups and downs, from 1931 to 1961, music continued to be a vital part of the ministry and mission of Lake Avenue Baptist Church. Webster House was dedicated on October 12, 1938. 
Initially, the use of the house was designated for the work of the Women's Society in other parish work. Over the years, Webster House has served many purposes. Offices, meeting rooms, archive storage, neighborhood programs, adult education classes, and housing in the third floor apartment. Webster House was ultimately sold to Paradigm Corporation in 2007, the funds from which have allowed the renovation of the church building at 72 Ambrose Street. And here we have a number of images of what Webster House looks like today. From 1931 to 1961, LEBC did not undertake the construction of a new sanctuary, but it did receive an acquisition of what became an important place for ministry in that era. From 1931 to 1961, class picnics continued to be an important part of the yearly celebrations of Lake Avenue Baptist Church. Here we have a copy of the bulletin cover from the 67th annual picnic held at Ontario Beach Park in June of 1932. We also have a list of committee chairs for that 1932 picnic, as well as a copy of the program that identifies all of the events that would take place that year. We also have a copy of the sports program from June 1932, with a list of all of the events and the first and second prize winners. In 1933, it appears that the Montgomery class continued to hold their own church picnics. The tradition of yearly picnics continued through the rest of the 1930s, and Ontario Beach Park seemed to be the point of destination each year. In 1935, in addition to the annual Sunday school and church picnic, a youth picnic was added. In 1937, the annual picnic was not held, and we have no reasons mentioned. The annual picnic, though, returned to the calendar in the events of 1938 at the end of the Sunday school year. And while we have materials that indicate that the picnic took place in the 1930s and the early 1940s, in 1943 the picnic was suspended due to World War II. The limiting factor was rationing, in particular the rationing of food items, and also the rationing of rubber and gas, which meant reduced transportation. In 1945, while the annual picnic was still suspended, individual class picnics returned, one of which was held solely for the church school workers, which was held at Durand Eastman Park, Sunset Point. The youth picnic was held at Genesee Valley Park, Baker Farm Picnic Grounds. There are a lot of interesting things that took place during the Sunday School Picnic, including the opportunity to get into the movies. Moving pictures will be taken by Mr. Charles Lurch. It was clear that over the late 1940s and early 1950s, the annual picnics were an important opportunity for friends and family of LABC to get together and to celebrate another church year of mission, education, worship, and fun. It was in the late 1950s that we start to have other pictures that show the celebrations from these events. Church school picnics were clearly an important part of LABC life from 1931 to 1961. As we begin the 1930s, the youth ministry at Lake Avenue Baptist Church was alive and well. In 1931, the senior high class developed an orchestra. This complemented the quartet that sang in places like Fairport Baptist Home. 
and on April 5, 1931, the Senior Christian Endeavor Society presented a play during evening worship. In 1931, the Senior High Fellowship also scheduled a lecture series from February through March. It was in the 1920s and 30s that in addition to the youth ministries already mentioned, there were other youth activities. There was a boys' work committee and a young people's commission. It would also appear that the youth commission, boys' work committee, and the young people's Sunday school classes, like the class unusual, were all engaged in the work of nurturing the youth of the church. And it would also appear that during this era, the Boy Scout Troop No. 53 was chartered at LABC. Here we have a short report that indicates the presence of that early scout troop, as well as some articles about things that they did during that period. It's not exactly clear when the Girl Scout program was established at LABC. However, by 1935, we know that the troops existed, troops number 12 and 53. And here in 1938, we have an image of a Boy Scout presentation. It was in 1939 that Dr. Daniel Poling, president of the World Union of Christian Endeavor, was featured as the speaker at the annual youth banquet at LABC. And at some point, Boy Scout Troop 53 began publishing a newsletter, The Voice of 53. In this issue, we discover that in 1939, a scouting unit was formed, the Sea Scouts, the Sea Scouts was aimed at older boys, many of whom had already acquired the rank of Eagle Scout. And it was in the 1940s that sports continued to be an important part of the youth ministries at LABC. The 29th Annual Young People's Banquet was held on April 12, 1940. And for the 1941 Young People's Banquet, the Youth Commission invited Rev. Dr. Edwin Dahlberg to be the featured speaker. In December of 1941, even though World War II began, LABC managed to put a basketball team on the courts. That next year, on May 22, 1942, the 31st Annual Banquet for All Youth was held. One particular experience of note was that the Youth Day in 1942 was opened with a presentation by the Young People's Commission and was broadcast over LABC radio station WHAM, formerly WBO. Fast forward to 1949, where we find the Youth Banquet held in January 1949, and if you note, the formal youth program was followed by dancing and the fireside circle. We have evidence here that the Boy Scout Troop No. 53 and the Sea Scouts remained active throughout the 1940s. And here we have the charter application for the Senior Scout Unit. The Rev. Dr. Fred Dean, pastor of the Greece Baptist Church, was the featured speaker at the 1950 Annual Youth Banquet. Dr. Dean at the time was president of the New York Baptist Convention and he served at Greece Baptist for 36 years. That next year, Earl Abel, a student minister at LABC, was invited to be the speaker of the 1951 Youth Banquet. And it was in 1951, under the leadership of Reverend Stan Borden, that the youth at LABC were presenting a monthly Sunday school radio program. And it was on January 28, 1951, that the youth of the church led an evening communion. Note that Mrs. Borden, the wife of assistant pastor Stan Borden, was at the organ. Mrs. Borden also led the junior choir. In terms of broader relationships, Sandra Lewis, who was serving as the vice president of the LABC Baptist Youth Fellowship, took an interest in the Indian youth of the Tonawanda Baptist Youth Fellowship. They were invited to come to LABC and to visit the youth in 1958, the World Baptist Youth Conference was held in Toronto. Along with several other Baptist churches in Rochester, LABC sent youth delegates. Minister of Education at LABC was one of the three advisors who traveled with the youth to Toronto. The LABC youth were consistently involved in mission. 
In 1947, the Church World Service Organization was formed by 36 Protestant and Orthodox denominations. The purpose of the service was to assist displaced persons as the result of war and conflict. LABC youth took on a challenge called Share Our Surplus. They did so with Baptist youth fellowships from around the country to raise funds. And in March of 1961, New York State young people, including members from LABC, attended the Baptist Youth Fellowship Seminar in Washington, D.C. And it was in 1960 that Reverend James Miller, a student minister from 1960 to 1963, established a two-year project in interstate understanding. The first year, five young people from West Virginia spent the summer in Rochester with the members of the LABC youth. And in 1961, three youth from LABC spent the summer in West Virginia. Jim was born and raised in West Virginia. That same year, the National BYF Project was the Baptist Youth Fellowship Camp in Japan. The LABC youth accepted the challenge to raise funds for the project. And finally, it was in 1961 that LABC youth traveled to both Cayuca Lake and Green Lake, Wisconsin for events. Clearly, from 1931 to 1961, LABC youth ministry continued a tradition of fun, fellowship, education, worship, and mission. In addition to some very strong senior pastors, from 1931 to 1961, LABC was blessed with some profoundly gifted assistant and associate ministers. The first of these was Carl E. Dawkins. While in seminary at RTS from 1928 to 1929, he worked at Grace Methodist Episcopal Church in Rochester, New York, and following graduation, he married Mary Louise Spangler. Just prior to the wedding, he accepted a call to First Baptist Church, Canisteo, New York. And then, in January of 1936, he resigned his position at Canisteo to accept the call to become assistant pastor at LABC, where he served until the end of 1938. It was in March of 1939 that he took the pulpit at Drexel Hill Baptist Church in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. By 1949, while at Drexel Hill, the Dawkins family had grown to include four children. And in 1953, construction at a new location began on a new church building in Drexel Hill. Our final record for Reverend Dawkins was him continuing to serve as pastor at Drexel Hill Baptist Church in 1957. All four children are grown, including college or having graduated from college. The next of these leaders was Earl Gross, who grew up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, his parents were active members at the First Baptist Church of Sioux Falls, and it would be the Sioux Falls Church that would ordain him to Christian ministry. Upon graduation from high school, he spent his first two years of college work at Iowa State University, after which he transferred to Sioux Falls College back in his hometown. In the spring of 1940, he graduated from CRDS and immediately accepted a call to become the assistant pastor at LABC. And at the end of his first year at LABC, the pastor, Reverend Dr. Yapel, resigned his position and Earl stepped in to lead the church for the next 10 months until Reverend Watkins arrived as senior pastor. When he graduated and came to LABC, he was 29 years old, having interrupted his educational path several times to work with youth, young boys in particular, as well as some business opportunities. In 1943, he resigned his post at LABC to accept the call to become pastor at First Baptist Church in Painted Post, New York. From Painted Post, he accepted the pastorate at the First Baptist Church in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, where he served from 1947 to 1950. And after Lansdale, he served at the First Baptist Church of Washington, Pennsylvania for nine years, from 1951 to 1960. It was then in 1961 that he moved to Bluffton, Indiana, to take the pastorate at First Baptist Church in Bluffton.
In 1965, Reverend Gross left Bluffton to return to New York State, having accepted the call to pastor the recently merged Federated Church of Ulysses. He was the first pastor of the newly formed church, which was a merger between First Presbyterian Church and First Baptist Church of Trumansburg. At age 63, he passed away. He was found dead in the parsonage of Addison New York Baptist Church, where he had been serving for the past two and one-half years. Next in the line of leadership was Stanley Borden, who was born in Toronto, Ontario, but grew up in Waterbury, Connecticut. He was a graduate of Acadia University in Canada and received his theological training at Union Theological Seminary in New York City. While he was in seminary, he was a student minister at Madison Avenue Presbyterian Church in New York City and for two years at First Baptist Church in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Reverend Borden came to LABC in 1947 from the Federated Church at McLean, New York. Stan, as he was fondly called at LABC, brought with him a broad experience in youth ministry, vacation Bible school, and youth camps. He also came with his talented wife, who was a graduate of Coe College at Cedar Rapids, Iowa, having majored in organ. She was also a graduate of Union School in sacred music. It was in 1952 that he resigned his position at LABC to accept a similar position with the First Baptist Church in Oak Park, Illinois. By 1958, he and his family had moved to Ames, Iowa to assume the senior pastor position at First Baptist Church. While in Ames, he was influential in social justice issues, and in 1961, they opened the first nursery school in Ames. They were also engaged in the establishment of the Northcrest Retirement Community there. These are only two of the long list of community engagements that was influenced by Stanley. By 1970, the Bordens left Ames to accept a pastorate at Trinity Community Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and in a letter dated 1993 to the LABC pastor, Peter Carmen, Stanley indicated that he was serving as the part-time associate pastor at First Baptist Church, St. Paul, Minnesota. Jeffrey Livingston was born on June 1886, and he was educated at the Mount Hermon School for Boys in Mount Hermon, Massachusetts. In 1919, Jeffrey enrolled at Hillsdale College in Hillsdale, Michigan, graduated in 1923 with his BA degree. He was also awarded a DD degree in 1941. Although he had been confirmed Episcopalian, he eventually joined a Baptist church in Pottenskill, New York, where there he married Wilhelmina Bauer. After graduating from CRDS in 1926, he served a variety of churches in Harrisburg, New York, Mayville and Grant, Michigan, Lockport, New York, from 1924 to 1936. And then he served at Parcells Baptist Church in Rochester, New York, from 1936 to 1952. In 1952, Reverend Jeffrey Livingston was called as assistant pastor at LABC. And in 1954, when senior pastor Jeffrey Watkins resigned his position, Jeffrey served as the interim pastor for four months until George Hill was called. While still serving as assistant pastor at LABC in 1958, he died on February 24th. Charles Thun was born in 1903 in Middletown, Ohio. Having taken his elementary education in the public school system, he entered Doan Academy in Greenville, Ohio. Doan Academy was part of a Denison University serving as a preparatory school for college. After receiving his Bachelor of Philosophy from Denison, he enrolled at the Rochester Theological Seminary in 1929 with a Bachelor of Divinity. Mr. Thun did additional studies at Cincinnati University, Union Theological Seminary, and clinical training at the Miami Valley, Ohio State Hospital and the New Jersey State Hospital. Charles then moved to Minneapolis to serve at Temple Baptist Church for the next nine years. In Minneapolis, he founded a weekly radio program sponsored by the Council of Churches, and at the same time, he founded a boys' community club, which grew to over 600 members. 
It was from Minneapolis that he then accepted a pastorate at First Baptist Church in Ottumwa, Iowa. There he formed the Personal Problem Clinic, which was staffed by himself, another pastor, and 18 professional men and women, and the services were free to any and all. In July of 1958, Lake Avenue Baptist Church called Reverend Charles Thun to serve as associate pastor. In the church archives, we hold a number of articles that speak to the impact in ministry that he had while here in Rochester. In 1970, Charles retired from active ministry and moved to Florida. He died in September 26, 1965. It is possible to see that from 1931 to 1961, LABC has had a number of very impactful assistant and associate ministers, and for that we have been blessed. As we continue our journey through Mission and Missionaries 1931 to 1961, we come across Linnea Nelson. Linnea was born on March 18, 1904 in Preston, Washington, to a Swedish Baptist missionary preacher. She grew up at Lakeside Baptist Church in Oakland, California. Miss Nelson graduated from the University of California with a BA degree and an education degree. She continued her studies at the Baptist Berkeley School of Divinity and graduated with an MA degree. Prior to her missionary appointment, she served as a teacher and principal in elementary education and in 1935 she had been named the Helen Barrett Montgomery Memorial Missionary and sailed for East China, and on arrival she took responsibility to the work of the Chiang Mai Girls' School at Kinhua, China. By 1938, war conditions forced her to leave Kinhua, and once in Shanghai she took a teaching position at Shanghai University, and while at the university she also worked in social and relief efforts in the city. In 1940, she returned to the United States on furlough and took up her work in doctorate in education at the University of California. During that time, she was the Dean of Women at the Berkeley School of Divinity until 1946. After three years back in China, the political climate became more threatening to the point that she was forced to leave once again. And upon her return, the Women's Baptist Foreign Mission Society sent her to the Philippines, where she took the position as Dean of the School of Graduate Studies. She also served on the faculty as Professor of Bible, English, and Education, and as the Director of the Teacher Training Program. And in the school years 1956 to 57 and 65 to 66, she served in the university as Acting President. In 1969, she retired from the mission field. However, she continued to use her talents at the School of Nursing, the Hospital Bautista in Nicaragua, the Union Bible College in India, and then back at Bacone College in Oklahoma. Next, we have the Dawsons. In 1923, Mr. and Mrs. George Dawson moved to Rochester, where George took a position as comptroller at McCurdy and Company. That same year, they joined Lake Avenue and became actively involved for the next 30 years. They were particularly interested in the Orient, a place that they had studied when their two sons were in service during World War II and heightened by a trip that they made to the Orient. But their specific interest in Japan was formed by the relationship between LABC, Ishihara-san, and the kindergarten and training school she founded in Tokyo. George taught English to the students who were preparing to be kindergarten teachers, as well as business professionals looking to improve their English language. And Mrs. Dawson also taught English at the elementary level and offered piano lessons as well. The house they occupied in Japan was used for Bible study and Sunday school classes, so the Dawsons helped where needed. Next we have George Frank, born in October 1935 to parents who were active at LABC. Following high school, he went enrolled in Bucknell College, where he established religious training program at the campus radio station. And during summer breaks, he worked in the migrant ministry program. 
Early in his time at Bucknell, he made the decision to devote his talents and skills to those parts of the world with the greatest need. After graduating with his engineering degree, he applied to the American Baptist Foreign Mission Society, which appointed him to the mission field in the Belgian Congo. And before departing there, he applied to the YMCA Trade and Technical School in New York City for courses in auto mechanics. And while in New York City, he also studied the French language in preparation for his duties on the mission field. When George arrived in Africa, he took up residence at the Sonabata mission field and initially he was responsible for the maintenance of six shortwave radio stations, which connected six mission hospitals. Some of the hospitals did not have regular doctors, and communication was essential. He also took the mechanical training to native Congolese to provide support. After three years in the Belgian Congo, he returned to the U.S. on furlough. He immediately enrolled in Harvard University to work on his master's degree in education. His hope was that eventually a technical school would be established in the Congo where he would be able to teach a larger group of Congolese. In 1960, George and other foreigners were forced out of the Congo. He helped evacuate many American families during the uprisings before he himself was actually chased on foot to a waiting helicopter. Before his evacuation, he taught science for one year in southern Rhodesia. In 1963, he married Miss Allie Elizabeth Gardner of Muncie, Indiana. Allie was a graduate of the Ball Memorial Hospital School of Nursing. She too had entered the mission field, serving as a nurse in southern Rhodesia. The couple then moved to Boston for further education with the hope that they would return to the mission field in Congo. And last we have Miss Verna Voles, born and educated in Rochester, her family, parents Bill and Anne, and sister Mary Ann Steele were actively engaged in LABC. Following high school, she enrolled at the University of Rochester and graduated with a sociology degree in 1940. From the U of R, she went to Union Theological School in New York City, graduating with a Master's of Theology. Upon graduation, she joined the Foreign Division of the YWCA and accepted an assignment in Liberia, West Africa, her work there was focused on the building of the YWCA. After her time in Liberia, she was assigned to the YMCA program in Burma and Thailand, and in Thailand she made her home in the River Kwai family camp. When she returned in 1966, she continued to live at the camp, and although retired, she continued to teach English to staff at a Bangkok hotel. She also became engaged in the Bangkok Riding and Polo Club, where she taught riding to children of U.S. foreign workers. Let us continue our historical journey as we learn more about two of the pastors from 1931 to 1961. Reverend W. S. K. Yabel was born on January 4, 1894 in Dayton, Ohio. After graduating from high school, Yapel entered Shirtliff College in Alton, Illinois. In his senior year, he left college to enlist in the regular army as an ambulance driver in World War I, and before the end of the war, he became a commissioned chaplain and held the rank of first lieutenant after the war in the Reserve Corps. During his time in the service, he served on the staff in the chaplain's training school, served on the board in the hospital ship, and in army hospitals and all around New York City, and served as an entertainer in the YMCA hospitals, in camps, and well on board the hospital ship. In 1917, after graduating from Shirtliff College with a Bachelor of Philosophy, he married Edna Seeler on December 25, 1918, a graduate also from Shirtliff College. He enrolled in the Rochester Theological Seminary in 1919, graduating in 1922 with his Bachelor of Divinity degree and while in seminary, he served as pastor of York Baptist Church. After RTS, Reverend Yabel accepted the call to serve as pastor of First Baptist Church in Groton, New York. Professor Molman from RTS preached the installation sermon. During his time at the Groton Church, he drew up plans for and supervised the construction of a new parsonage. The church auditorium was remodeled and the church office was established and equipped. 
Yapel believed that the church could learn some lessons from the world of business management. And while in college and at Groton, he had worked extensively with the young people, and in particular with the YMCA in Alton, Illinois. And in 1925, he resigned his pastorate at Groton and accepted the call to serve as the associate pastor at Lake Avenue Baptist Church. And then, on September of 1929, Reverend Yabel assumed the senior pastorate at LABC. The years of his leadership at LABC were very challenging times. The stock market collapsed in October of 1929, and at the beginning of the 1930s, LABC lost to death numerous long-time devoted members. However, during his 11 years, the endowment quadrupled, a building fund campaign raised $25,000, and receipts totaled close to $900,000, so that meant that in the depth of the worldwide depression, LEBC was able to continue its ministry at extraordinary levels. Reverend Yapel himself continued LABC's active engagement in civil, educational, and church organizations outside the walls of the church building. He was a trustee at Cayuca College. He was also a trustee at Cook Academy in Montour Falls, New York, and served as a director of the Rochester Community Home for Girls. And furthermore, he served as a trustee of the People's Rescue Mission. And amongst all of these and more, Dr. Yabel also teamed up with Judson Press to publish a book entitled Your Money and Your Life. Within the church, prior to the formation of LABC, the Lake Avenue Sabbath School had held an evening worship service. When the church was formed in 1871, a morning service was initiated and the evening services continued. But as you can see from these announcements, evening services were still being held, and by October of 1938, the services were then discontinued. Here we have a collection of events and worship service announcements that occurred during his tenure. One incredible note is that by the end of his time at LABC, he and Mrs. Yapel had hosted more than 5,000 members and friends of the church within their home. In May of 1940, it was announced that Dr. Yapel had been called to be the Executive Secretary to the Board of Education of the Northern Baptist Convention. Shortly after the announcement of his move, he fell ill and was moved to an out-of-town sanitarium where he remained until the spring of 1941. And in February of 1941, even with his absence, the church held a farewell event. Dr. Yapel then died in Hillsborough, New Hampshire on March 10, 1962, at age 68. Reverend Dr. Gerald Watkins was born on October 29, 1897, in Ammonford, Wales. When his family immigrated to the United States, they first settled in Washington, D.C., and at age 11 he was converted and baptized into membership at Temple Baptist Church. They then settled in Fort Plain, New York, where Gerald was licensed to preach by the Fort Plain Baptist Church, where his older brother served as the pastor. In 1921, he graduated from Colgate University with high honors, and was recognized by his classmates as being elected to the highest student office in the university. Upon graduation, he settled at Norwich, New York to pastor First Baptist Church, and under his leadership the congregation and Sunday school grew, and a number of young men from that Sunday school class went to Colgate University to prepare for ministry. In 1924, he made the decision to further his education and enrolled in Rochester Theological Seminary, graduating in 1927. While in seminary, he served as pastor at Webster Baptist Church. From there, he accepted a call from the First Baptist Church of Leominster, Massachusetts. In 1928, he became the pastor of First Baptist Church in Cortland, New York, where he stayed until 1936, and while in Cortland, he worked extensively with students at the State Normal School, showing outstanding ability with the problems of college students. In December of 1940, LABC extended a call to Reverend Dr. Gerald Watkins to assume the role of senior minister. The LABC archives contains a great number of newspaper clippings and articles that speak both to his arrival in Rochester 
and his involvement in a number of different issues of the day. Cayuca College presented Reverend Watkins with an honorary degree in the Doctor of Divinity. In 1945, Dr. Watkins then served as a member of the Post-War Planning Commission of the Northern Baptist Convention. And then in 1947, Dr. Watkins joined a team of Baptist leaders to tour Europe in an effort to assess the recovery needs of Baptist churches in the seven countries, and while there he attended the World Council of Churches in Switzerland. And then in 1950, Reverend Watkins was also awarded an honorary doctorate degree from Colgate University. And then in 1951, LABC celebrated its 80th anniversary. That was the same year that the church celebrated the 10th anniversary of Pastor Watkins' ministry in LABC. Throughout his time at LABC, Reverend Watkins took a strong stance on the prevention of further world wars. Rally Day continued to be held at the start of the church school year, but LABC may have been one of the few to have Rally Day's broadcast on the radio. And then, perhaps early in the history of television, the Christmas Eve service at LABC was broadcast live on December 24, 1950. And then in December of 1953, Reverend Watkins resigned his position at the LABC pulpit after 13 years. After serving as Central Baptist Church in Providence, Rhode Island, Dr. Watkins returned to Rochester to take an interim assignment as Professor of Homiletics at Colgate-Rochester Divinity School. And then, later on, word came from Roswell, Georgia, where Pastor Watkins had recently moved to live with one of his daughters that he had passed away. Throughout its history, LABC has served as a training ground for many student ministers. Barthol Mark Gordon Jacobson was born in Cleveland, Ohio on September 26, 1903. After graduating from Bethel Academy in St. Paul, his higher education began at the University of Minnesota Extension Division in 1922. After spending one semester in McAllister College, he transferred to the University of Southern California to finish his BA degree in 1927. In 1929, he enrolled at the Rochester Theological Seminary, and while at RTS, he began as a student pastor at LABC. It appears that this is the beginning of the student pastor program at LABC. In 1930 to 1933, he served as student pastor at Carleton Baptist Church in Kent, New York. After three years serving at Trinity Baptist Church in Cleveland, Ohio, he accepted a call to Calvary Baptist Church in Pasadena, California. Following his time at Calvary, he moved on to Highland Park Baptist Church, where he ministered until 1950, and during his time there, he was engaged in a radio ministry, which was one half-hour program heard throughout the entire Pacific Coast. In 1950, he accepted a call to Covenant Baptist Church in Los Angeles, California, where he pastored until 1953 when he moved on to First Baptist Church in Butte, Montana. And in June 1958, he returned to California, serving as interim pastor at Westlake Community Baptist Church in Dale City, California. Next, we have Francis Trimmer, born in 1911 in Roanoke, Virginia. He graduated from Roanoke College and then Colgate Rochester Divinity School in 1935. He continued his education at Cornell University and then a Doctor of Divinity from Roanoke in 1949. While at CRDS, he served as student minister at LABC, and after graduation, he accepted a call to First Baptist Church of Groton, New York, and then was Director of Education for the New York State Baptist Convention Following that, in 1945, he assumed a pastorate at Emanuel Frieden's Baptist Church in Schenectady, New York. In 1959, he moved to the West Lafayette Federated Church in Indiana, and then from 1973 to 1975, served at the International Church in Bangkok, Thailand. After his retirement, he continued to serve as interim pastor at a number of churches, and died at the age of 70. Paul Sturgis was born on October 4, 1907. 
After graduating from Carrollton High School, he entered William and Jewell College and then Brown University, graduating in 1931. In 1931, he began his theological education at CRDS, and while there, he served as student minister at LABC. Here, he taught the married people's class. From 1926 until 1929, he served at Waverly Church and then First Baptist Church, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. In 1943, he resigned at Pittsfield and accepted the call to First Baptist Church, Redlands, California. Returning to the East Coast, he became pastor at Central Baptist Church in Providence, Rhode Island, and then in 1924 accepted the position of the Director of Educational Evangelism, State Department of Evangelism for the National Council of Churches. Finally, by 1957, he was serving as the Executive Secretary of the Massachusetts Baptist Convention. Next, we have Roger Powell. During his time at CRDS, he served as student minister for two years, 1936 to 1938. After a time at First Baptist Church, Camillus, New York, he returned to Rochester and joined the Genesee Baptist Church where he remained for the rest of his life. During his time at Genesee Baptist, he served as a deacon, trustee, Christian ed instructor on the Fairport Baptist Home Board and other church committees. In addition, he was a writer who printed his own works on the press and a talented worker. And next, we have Carl Eugene McAllister, who was born in 1912 in Cortland, New York, where he graduated from high school in 1931. In 1935, he graduated from Colgate University followed by three years of study at CRDS. While there, he served as student minister from 1936 to 1938, along with Roger Powell. During World War II, he served as a chaplain on the USS San Francisco. Following the war, he served churches in Chicago, Illinois, Janesville, Wisconsin, Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, Lewiston, Maine, and Newark, Ohio. Following his retirement in 1978, he was named Pastor Emeritus at First Baptist Church in Newark, Ohio, remained active in church and civic life, and died in 2009 at the age of 96. We continue our journey with student pastors 1931 to 1961 with Hugh Quinn Morton II. Morton was born on December 21, 1915, in Pierre, South Dakota. After graduating from Redlands University, he was a student at CRDS from 1937 to 1940. While at CRDS, he was a student pastor at LABC alongside student pastor George Hill. The two were also roommates at CRDS and were both ordained by LABC. Following graduation in 1940, Hugh accepted a call to pastor First Baptist Church in Bristol, Vermont. In 1942, the Mortons moved to Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, where Hugh served as the Protestant chaplain at the Lewisburg Federal Prison. Reverend Morton then served churches in Pennsylvania, California, Keene, New Hampshire, and at the Church of the Redeemer in Yonkers, New York. He became the executive minister of TABCOM, the American Baptist Churches of Monroe County, in 1970 and retired from that position in 1981. He died in Rochester in 1999 at the age of 83. Next we have George Hill, who was a student at CRDS and served as student minister from 1937 to 1940 alongside Hugh Morton. George became senior pastor of LEBC in 1954. Following Hill, we have Jack Neal Huber, who was born in 1916 he graduated from the Tulsa Central High School, after which he enrolled in the University of Tulsa. After a year at the University of Chicago Divinity School, he transferred to CRDS in 1938, and while at CRDS, he served as a student minister at LABC alongside Roger Sharp, and at the same time, he worked at West Avenue Methodist in 1940, and then Grace Methodist in 1941. Following graduation, Jack was ordained by the Baptist Union of Rochester and Monroe County 
and then accepted a call to pastor North Albany Baptist Church in Albany, New York. Alongside Reverend Huber, we have Roger Sharp, who came from Cleveland Heights, Ohio, did his undergraduate work at Case School of Applied Science, and then the University of Chicago. As mentioned, while well, at CRDS, Roger served as student minister at LABC from 1940 to 1941, alongside John Huber. Next in this line of student ministers, we have Robert George Middleton, born in Syracuse, New York in 1918. He studied at West High School in Rochester and in 1937 to 1941 from Colgate University. Robert entered CRDS in 1941 and served as student minister at LABC from 1941 to 1942 with Charles P. Santa, and after graduating from CRDS, he became pastor at the Baptist Church of Evangel in Narberth, Pennsylvania. He resigned from there to accept a call to First Baptist Church in Haddonfield, New Jersey, and then from Haddonfield first, he accepted a call to First Baptist Church of Kansas City, Missouri. Alongside Middleton served Charles Santa, a native of Houseborn, North Carolina. He graduated from Wake Forest College, then enrolled at CRDS. From 1941 to 1942, he served as student minister at LABC. Alongside Santa, we have Norman Lawton, a graduate of Syracuse University, who served as student minister at LABC for only two months in 1941. And from 1943 to 1944, William Nixon served as student pastor. Dr. Gerald Watkins was senior pastor at the time, and William married Jane Watkins, one of three Watkins daughters. And finally, we have Robert Towner, born in Hornell, New York in 1919. He attended Hornell Public Schools and graduated from Hamilton College in Clinton, New York. After serving at LABC as student pastor from 1943 to 1945, he served churches in Lansing, Michigan, Norwich, New York, Lewiston, Maine, Madison, Wisconsin, Palo Alto, California, and then Penfield, New York. When in Wisconsin, he also served as chaplain at the Wayland Academy at Beaver Dam. After retirement, he returned to Wisconsin and served numerous churches as interim pastor. And then after a move to California, he died in San Mateo in 2016 at the age of 97. Part 3 of Student Ministers 1931 to 1961 begins with Alfred Scipione. Alfred was a graduate of Denison University in Greenville, Ohio, and Colgate Rochester Divinity School. And while at CRDS, he served as student minister at LABC from 1943 to 1945. Following graduation, he accepted a call to serve as associate pastor at First Baptist Church, Syracuse, New York, and then moved to Tully, New York, where he served as pastor until 1953. And it was in 1953 that Reverend Scipione accepted a call to serve as associate pastor at First Baptist Church in Columbia, Missouri. Next, we have John Monroe who grew up in Long Beach, California, and attended school there. Then he enrolled at Stanford University, graduating in 1941. After one year of studies at Berkeley Baptist Divinity School, he transferred to Colgate Rochester Divinity School and graduated in 1944. While at Colgate Rochester Divinity School, he served at LABC from 1943 until 1944. After serving in Baptist churches in Ohio and California, his ordination was recognized by the Methodist Church in the Nevada, California Annual Conference. He then served as pastor, campus minister, and district superintendent in Northern California and Reno. And in 1962, he was appointed pastor at Glide Memorial United Methodist Church in San Francisco. The Glide Church became the groundbreaking ministry with the gay and lesbian population in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco in the mid-1960s. 
Francis Field Fisher was born on May 6, 1915 in Washington. Francis graduated from Whatcom High School and then did college work at Western Washington College and the University of Washington, graduating in 1943. From 1943 to 1946, he was enrolled at CRDS while at the same time doing studies at the Eastman School of Music, and it was during these years that he served as student minister at LABC from 1944 to 1946. Upon graduation, he accepted a call to serve as Minister of Music at First Baptist Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and by 1949 he became senior pastor at that church, and it was in that year that he suffered a tragic accident that could have ended his life. In August of 1951, he resigned his position at first to begin studies at the White Institute of Psychiatry, and at the same time he began doing some special writing and edited for the American Baptist Ministers and Missionary Benefit Board in New York City. From that time until 1959, he worked in various positions at the MMBB. Elmer West was a graduate of the University of Richmond, which was followed by enrollment at CRDS in 1947, and it was during this time that he served at LABC as student minister from 1944 to 1945. And next we have another student who studied at the University of Richmond. Jack Zuber from Churchville, New York studied there followed by three years of study at CRDS and during that time from 1943 to 1944 he also served at LABC as a student minister. Next we have Robert H. Emmons who served as LABC as student minister during his time at CRDS from 1945 to 1946. After graduation from seminary, he served at First Baptist Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, East Aurora Baptist Church in East Aurora, New York, and First Baptist Church of Erie, Pennsylvania. Earl Abel was born in 1924 in Baileyville, Illinois. He eventually ended up at North American Baptist Seminary in Rochester, New York in 1924 to do his college work. Having completed his college degree, he then studied at the University of Rochester, enrolling in the fall of 1946 at Colgate Rochester Divinity School, and from 1946 to 1948 he served as student minister at LABC. He completed his education after spending one year of studies at Westminster College in Cambridge, England. Then his first pastorate was at First Baptist Church, Camillus, New York, where he was ordained in 1950 by the Onondaga Baptist Association. In January 1957, he accepted a call to the Noank Baptist Church in Connecticut. Then in 1959, while serving at the Noank Baptist Church, he began studies at Yale University in preparation for teaching. John, or Jack, Clements was born in 1925 in New Haven, Connecticut. He graduated from the New Haven Hill House High School in 1943 and graduated from the New Haven State Teachers College. And by 1947, he transitioned to the Kalamazoo College in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It was during his time at CRDS that he served as student minister at LABC from 1949 to 1950. Following his graduation and his ordination at First Baptist Church in New Haven, Connecticut, he began serving at Underwood Memorial Baptist Church in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, where he began his ministry as associate pastor of Ministry of Education. In 1953, he accepted a call as pastor of Wyoming Baptist Church in Wyoming, Ohio, and then in 1956 he resigned there to serve at Roundy Memorial Baptist Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Robert Fletcher Smith was born in 1926 in Syracuse, New York, and in 1944 graduated from the Onondaga Valley Academy. Following his graduation in 1950 from Syracuse University, he enrolled at CRDS. During his studies at CRDS, he served as student minister at LABC from 1949 to 1951. On May 4, 1952, he was ordained at Delaware Street Baptist Church in Syracuse, New York, 
and then by June 1st of 1952, assumed the pastorate at First Baptist Church, Pittsford, where he remained until 1957, then accepted a call to First Baptist Church, Watertown, New York. Next, we have Luther W. Smith, who grew up in Philadelphia and graduated from Denison University before coming to CRDS, where he graduated in 1953. From 1950 to 1951, he served as student minister at LABC. Next, we have Glenn Brown, who graduated from the University of the Redlands, a Baptist school, in 1951, then from CRDS in 1954, and at CRDS, he served at LABC as student minister. Then we have Donald Deere, who was born in 1929 in Terre Haute, Indiana, and baptized by his father, Reverend Roy Deere, at the First Baptist Church in Narberth, Pennsylvania. He followed in the footsteps of his father and older brother by graduating from Denison University, then CRDS, where he graduated in 1955. While at CRDS, he served at LABC as student minister from 1951 to 1952. Upon graduation, he and his wife, Barbara Sloat, were commissioned by the American Baptist churches as missionaries in the Belgian Congo, where they taught school. After many years in the Congo, they returned to time in France when he earned his doctorate, and then back to the United States. He taught New Testament at the American Baptist Seminary of the West in Berkeley, California, then spent many years on the faculty of Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia. They ultimately retired to Pilgrim Place in Claremont, California, where he died at the age of 93 on January 5th, 2013. Richard Harris from Lynchburg, Virginia, graduated from the Georgia School of Technology before enrolling at CRDS. He served as student minister at LABC from 1952 to 1953, and then graduated from CRDS in 1955. Robert Greaves was from Los Angeles, California, and a graduate of the University of the Redlands. In 1952 to 1953, along with Richard Harris, he served as student minister at LABC and graduated from CRDS in 1955. Next, we have William Bixby from Davenport, Iowa, a graduate of Ottawa University in Ottawa, Kansas, and CRDS from 1957. And during the school year 1953 to 1954, he served as student minister at LABC. Merlin Bradley from Berrien Springs, Missouri, was a graduate of Denison University and finished his Bachelor of Divinity at Colgate Rochester Divinity School in 1956. And during the school year 1954 to 1956, he served as student minister at LABC. Next, we have Peter Lennox from Detroit, Michigan, who did his undergraduate work at Kalamazoo College. During the school year 1954 to 1956, while at CRDS, he served as student minister along with Merlin Bradley. Robert Charles Boyer was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1910. In 1941, he received his AB degree from the University of Chicago and an MS degree in 1948 at the same school. Upon graduation in 1941, he took a position at the Association House of Chicago. It was there that Cynthia Cole met Bob Boyer. The die was cast and they were married in 1950. They immediately moved to Western Lafayette, Indiana, where Bob took a position serving as the Director of Christian Education for all the Protestant churches in West Lafayette. And in 1956, they moved to Rochester, New York, where he entered Colgate Rochester Divinity School. They joined Lake Avenue Baptist Church upon arrival. Bob became student minister, responsible for young adult activities, advisor to the Sunday Night Club, and director of the community center of the church. He was ordained at LABC in 1960. After his graduation from CRDS in 1960, he accepted a call to become the associate campus pastor at the University Baptist Church in State College, Pennsylvania, where he served for nearly 25 years, and he also taught sociology at Penn State's Division of Continuing Education. 
In 1985, in preparation for retirement, they moved back to Indiana, where Bob joined the campus ministry at the University of Indiana in Bloomington. And in 1994, Cynthia died at the age of 68. The former members of the Sunday Night Club put together a memorial service at LABC. Next, we have Robert Frears, who grew up in Guelph, Ontario, Canada, and graduated from McMaster University. He then enrolled in the Colgate-Rochester Divinity School, where he graduated in 1957. He served at LABC as a student minister during his senior year. William T. McKee graduated from New York University, coming from Brooklyn, New York. William graduated in CRDS in 1960, having served LABC as a student minister during his junior year. And finally, we have Robert Terry, who graduated from Cornell University, then entered CRDS, from which he graduated in 1963. And during his first two years of CRDS, 1959 to 1961, he served LABC as a student minister. It's quite possible to see through the abundance of student ministers who served at LABC from 1931 to 1961 that LABC has had and continues to have a commitment to education and ministry. As we continue through the journey of the efforts of the LABC Women's Mission Society, we find that in 1931, the efforts of the circles were still in full swing. Their annual reports provide some significant evidence of their efforts from that year. For instance, in 1931, petitions in support of the World Court were circulated through each circle, gaining signatures. In addition, in March of that year was a celebration of education for the blind in Rochester, and Helen Keller was the featured speaker of that celebration. The LABC women assisted in the meals and participated in the program. And also, LABC Women's Mission Society worked with the Council of Church Women to assist the unemployed men in finding jobs. In October, the Women's Baptist Missionary Convention of New York State was hosted at LABC by the Women's Mission Society. And later that month, at the White Cross meeting, 38 women from LABC and women from other churches gathered together to make surgical dressings to be sent to Dr. Carmen in India. They, in total, sent 458 pounds when shipped. By January of 1932, the number of Italian and Polish immigrants had increased significantly, and additional volunteers were requested from the circles to assist in making monthly call to these new immigrants' homes. By May of 1932, the community chest failed to make its goal, forcing them to reduce their support of local charities, including the Baptist Home, so in order to make up the deficit, the home asked the women of Monroe County Baptist Churches to save soap wrappers and other products that could be redeemed for cash. It was in 1932 that the Council of Church Women organized a committee to take over the play hours provided by the city during the summer month. The program was designed to keep children off the streets during the school vacation. And here we have an image that the Society hosted a shower to acknowledge the work of Ruth Maycomb at Bethel House in Campbell, Ohio. Here are the reports from 1932 to 1933, which also speak to a variety of missional activities. In these years, the Society continued its direct support of the Italian Church at LABC, and it was noted that the young people had formed a youth choir and organized social events for the children of that congregation. In addition to the task of working one day a month at the public health center, the Red Cross also opened a sewing room on East Avenue, asking church women to volunteer there, working on the projects of the room on a regular basis, and the LABC Society agreed to participate in the endeavor whenever possible. A conference was planned by the Home and Child Center at which Dr. Leland Foster Woods would be the keynote speaker. His topic would be marriage and the home. That same year, the LABC Worldwide Guild held a joint meeting for the Baptist Church on the Tonawanda Indian Reservation, and the Worldwide Guild of the Polish Baptist Church also joined them. Here we have the report from March 15, 1933, of the Marcina Riker Circle. 
In April of 1933, the trustees and deacons decided to close the church on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and this seriously hampered the work of the White Cross, but by rearranging schedules and members were able to open their homes for the sewing meetings and no time was lost. As we move into 1933 and 1934, we learn that the Northern Baptist Convention held their annual meeting in Rochester, and the LABC Women's Society joined with other societies at the Monroe Baptist Union to provide meals, housing services, and other supports for the Local Arrangement Committee. With heavy hearts, in 1934, the Society paid tribute to Helen Barrett Montgomery, who had died on October 19th of that year. In November, the Society held a Japanese tea to raise money for the support of Ishihara San and her kindergarten training school in Japan. In 1935, the Carmens were on furlough from the hospital, and they were the teachers for the annual School of Mission in January. Women's Mission Society at LABC was dedicated to providing detailed reports of all of their efforts each year. In October of 1936, the World Service Class, also known as Mrs. Yaple's Sunday School Class of Young Women, decided to become an official circle of the Women's Society. In April of 1937, the speaker at the annual meeting were the Detweilers, missionaries from Mexico. And also that year, a new plan for the summer Christmas tree party was initiated. Each circle had its own party for the time of the regular June meeting, and the gifts were collected at the individual parties and displayed for the group party that took place on June 17th. The 1938-1939 program year began with three events, the World's Fair of Missions, celebrated by the Council of Church Women, the Baptist Women's Home Missionary Society, celebrating 60th anniversary, with an invitation to Mrs. Rand Sira a retired home missionary who spoke about her work at the Kodiak Orphanage in Alaska. And then on October 12th, the opening of the Webster House was celebrated, and many of the circles began to start holding their meetings at the house. Since the early days, the mite boxes had been a form of collecting money for mission support, and in 1939, the proceeds were given to the Judson Fellowship Fund in celebration of the 150th anniversary of Adoniram Judson's birth. Then, as 1939 kicked off, in March the annual Shower for Charity Carmen was held. It had been a tradition for many years in recognition of her work as LABC's social worker in the surrounding neighborhoods. Then, the Society remained active in the Women's League of Voters and in 1939 established the chair of the Christian Citizenship Committee that would be the Society's member in the League. In April of 1940, at the annual meeting and spring dinner, the speaker was Professor Edith Vogel, who was a musicologist on the faculty at Cayuga College. Her immigration to the United States in 1939 was to serve as the director of music for the Czech Pavilion at the 1939 New York World's Fair. Czechoslovakia was then overrun by the Nazis while she was in New York, and she could not return to her native land. Eleanor Roosevelt helped find her position at Cayuga College. During that year, many events continued. Members of the society were involved in local welfare, Red Cross, and British relief efforts, and in April 3rd, the Society celebrated the anniversary of the consolidation of three women's societies at LABC and honored Helen Barrett Montgomery, who served as the first president of the Combined Society. During the 1942-1943 program year, all Society members were encouraged to register for the community defense work, and the White Cross continued its efforts to supply the needs of missionaries, but began to have difficulty getting materials produced to the missionaries due to the chaos of World War II. And it was by April of 1942 that the support efforts for Our Boys began to show results. At each of the meetings of the circles, excerpts from letters from Our Boys were read. And it was in December of 1942 that a new circle was formed, the Willoway Circle. 
During the spring of 1943, several circles held joint meetings where Naomi Carmen and Charity Carmen were the guest speakers, sharing the highlights of their work in India and Burma. Due to the war, their work had ceased at that time. As of April 1943, 181 LABC men and women were serving in branches of the military service, or at college, and it was decided that the Student Council Committee would continue to keep in touch with the students and the Society's Advisory Board would take on those in military service. In October of 1943, plans were laid for an Armistice Day luncheon, at which Mrs. Lansdale would bring her speech entitled, The Price of Enduring Peace. The presentation would be followed by a discussion on how serious the women of the society were about enduring peace, even if it meant extending rationing after the end of the war. In May of 1944, the Rochester Federation of Churches celebrated their 25th anniversary, and as part of the celebration, the goal was to raise $10,000. The LABC Women's Society set a goal to have each member of the society contribute 25 cents. Furthermore, the Christian Citizenship Committee encouraged all circles to study and support the following topics, participating in democracy, international relations, public morals, industrial relations, and peace. That year, at the annual meeting and dinner of the Society, the featured speaker was Miss Annie Root. Through the rest of 1944, other events took place. The Christian Friendship Circle planned to assist St. Mark's Church, the Italian Baptist Church, and to serve meals at the National Italian Society meeting to be held in Rochester. And at the same time, the executive committee suggested that come fall, if anyone had excess vegetables, they'd be brought to the church kitchen, where a canning team would use them for church dinners and social services. Finally, in September of that year, the White Cross Committee was asked to produce 30 kits for Russia, and the work would be distributed throughout all of the circles. It is worth noting that in 1944, we have record of the Society's continued support for the McCall mission in France. That call came for women to mend clothing and had been donated, which would be shipped to France and distributed to the working class. The Society also contributed $25 to the cause. Kicking off 1945, the Executive Committee voted to financially support the work of Dr. Ida B. Scudder at the hospital in Valour, India. We have many details about the 1945-1946 year, but just a portion of those are represented by the minutes of the annual meeting, where we read there were 446 members, 80 missionary meetings, 78 sewing meetings, 8 social meetings, many programs presented on civic and Christian citizenship and missionary themes, 5 church dinners that served 1,100 people. By 1947, the Society agreed to support the Church's Every Member Win a Member campaign, and the Society's constitution and bylaws were revised. The year-end report for 1947 indicated social service work, 557 cards and letters, 820 phone calls, 32 times washed clothes for six people, $767 given to charity, White Cross, and there were 825 articles made, including clothing, quilts, and bandages. The Girls Guild sent boxes of dressings to the Red Cross, and the Society made a commitment to pray each day for a certain time for the Society's world service and other work of the Society. In 1947, we have record from the Christian Friendliness Committee that sent bundles and boxes of clothing and shoes to church world service. They worked in 20 homes with 18 workers that had been working with groups of mixed nationalities and interracial groups. That same year, the Senior Worldwide Guild disbanded, but was replaced by a group for younger girls, and 10 girls signed up for the first three meetings. 
In February, the young girls of the church were invited to a meeting to consider the formation of the Girls' White Cross Group. Eleven girls attended, and they decided to organize. Their meeting would be held weekly, consisting of a program, recreation, devotions, and work on a White Cross project. The results of the many sewing projects of the White Cross Committee resulted in supplies being sent to the Carmens, the Kodiak Baptist Mission, and Dr. Alex Osterholm and his wife, who were in the Belgian Congo, and to the Mariner's Temple in New York City. On May 6th, as a fundraising event, the Women's Society presented a musical concert. And here we have another newspaper article about the women's continued mission work. Here's a picture of the World Service Circle from June 10, 1948. In September, the Society voted to become the official sponsors of the LABC players, and then in November, the Society sponsored a second fundraising event in the form of a lecture focused on current events. In December of 1948, the Society hosted over 200 women from the Women's Baptist Missionary Society of Rochester and Monroe County for an all-day meeting followed by a tea at Webster House in honor of Rev. Fred Dean as President of the Baptist Union. In November of 1949, we find the first reference to the Church Bazaar being held. The goal of the bazaar was to encourage the women to work together on one large project. The proceeds were given to the building fund. Also that fall was held the annual Fall Inspirational Dinner with 150 people in attendance. The program featured two solos by Ray DeVole and the piano solos by Mr. Anginello, pastor of St. Mark's Baptist Church, the Italian Baptist community. The annual report for the 1948-49 of the World Service Circle indicates that the Society adopted a young boy and his family in France. This was in response to the number of women in France who were left in poverty following the loss of the breadwinner during World War II. Here we have a copy of correspondence between the two. It was also in 1949 that we discover a new and updated copy of the Society's cookbook. It's easy to see that the women at LABC were still incredibly involved in mission and ministry during these wartime years. As we move into the 1950s, we continue to see the impact of the LABC Women's Mission Society on the church, both within the walls and beyond. In January of 1950, we have a thank you letter from Ruth Makem at the Boston Baptist Bethel House that was received in giving thanks for the gifts that were sent from the LABC women. And in January of 1951, two teas were held at which the film South of the Clouds was shown, after which Miss Anderson, student assistant at LABC for the year, made a presentation on the film. That same year, the White Cross supported two new missionaries, Toys, dolls, aprons, handkerchiefs, and ties were sent to Miss Innes Keel at the Overland Missionary in Puerto Rico, and sets of blocks were sent to Miss Mabel Olson at the Indian Mission in Oklahoma. In November of 1951, the second annual church bazaar was held. Our archives contain quite a bit of information about the church bazaar that was held in 1951 and another in 1952. At the one of 1952, proceeds were designated for the remodeling of Webster House. From this note, we have information that $1,585 profit was made after expenses were deducted. This was used for that particular remodel of Webster House. However, at this time, the women were not just active in church bazaars. Following the lead of the New York State Women's Society, the LABC Society, during this time, decided to merge the Friendliness Committee with the Christian Citizenship Committee. These activities of the new Christian Social Relations Committee would also be involved in the investigation of Congress voting records, circulation of 1952 Baptist resolutions, observations of United Nations Day, 
Human Rights Day, Rates Relations Day, and letters to congressional representatives. Furthermore, the Society also collected clothing and underwear for children and babies up to six years of age to create packets of peace which were distributed throughout the world. In addition, the World Service Committee also sent packages of food to several Baptist families in Germany who were also in need of gifts of clothing and care packages. In November of 1953, at the same time as the annual Church Bazaar, the Society responded to a request that came through from the Council of Church Women to assist with mending that would help with the needs of the Hillside Children's Home. And in October of 1954, an evening meeting of the Society celebrated Carolyn Bevan, wife of Dr. Robert Bevan, who was son of A.W. Bevan, who spoke on the mission work of Isabel Crawford with the Native Americans in Oklahoma. Around that same time, the Society received a request to have a member attend the meetings of the local Waldensian Society, which today has a relationship with the Methodist movement. And in January of 1955, the Business and Professionals Group began to consider becoming a recognized society of the Circle. In February of 1955, the Society voted to send two women to a national gathering of the American Baptist women at the American Baptist Assembly, established in 1944 as a national campground, spiritual center, and conference retreat center. And in 1955, the theme for the mother-daughter banquet was a pattern for living. The Society also hosted Miss Violet Rudd, Administrative Secretary of the National American Baptist Women's Board of Directors, who spent an entire day meeting with the Circle Officers and Executive Committee discussing the challenges and plans for future women's programs in the local church. It's particularly interesting how the women were able to balance their national and local interests in missions. At a visit to the Women's Society of the Tonawanda Indian Reservation Baptist Church, to which they were invited, they heard the stories of a Quinton Blue Eye, a young Indian boy from the Tonawanda Indian Reservation, who felt called to ministry to work with his people. His intent was to go to Bacone College in Oklahoma, then to Eastern Seminary, but there were no funds to pay for his education, and the Society formed a committee to take this under consideration. In May of 1956, the Society presented a fashion show in cooperation with Sibley's department store. The models were young women from LABC, and the proceeds went to the Student Benefit Fund. Tickets were 75 cents each, and $373 was raised. Around that same time, the Sunday Night Club, which had been carrying out work with migrants for several years, requested that the Society provide some assistance and the Christian Social Action Committee pledged to recruit the needed workers. At the same time, Lowell Fuster was sent to the American Baptist Assembly at Green Lake as a member of the New York State Baptist Youth Federation to attend the National Youth Council. It was in December of 1956 that LEBC voted to sponsor a Hungarian refugee family. The Society pledged to assist in whatever manner was needed to get the families settled in their new country. Always well organized, here we find that in 1957 the theme for the year is living water, the foreign study focus is Japan, and the home study is church and race. In February of 1957, Church World Service Circle announced that it was having souvenir plates with an image of the church on the front and a brief history on the back, and the plates were sold for $2 each. And on May 7th and May 8th, the annual meeting of the New York State Council of American Baptist Women was hosted by LABC, with over 900 women in attendance. Mrs. Naomi Carmen was a speaker at that convention. In September of 1957, the Children of the Church participated in the Trick or Treat for UNICEF program sponsored by the United Nations and were encouraged by the women of the society. And then in January of 1958, information was shared about the refit fund used to refit missionaries with supplies that were needed for their work. 
the Society voted to give their Easter offering to this work. We know that while this list is comprehensive, it is by no means complete, because the women of this ministry have continued over this period of time to be deeply engaged in mission and ministry, both local and abroad. As we move into the 1930s, we continue to see the importance of Christian education at LABC. We begin with the 1933-1934 Church School Brochure. Not only does it have a list of the programs for the rest of 1933, but a section called Why Your Child Should Be in Sunday School. And we have, from 1934 to 1935, another list of programs for that church year. In 1936, the Junior High Department did a Christmas program. And at the start of the 1937 church school year was a presentation called Know Your Church School Night. In 1937, we continue to have evidence that certificates of promotion were provided for the students. In 1938 and 1939, the children of the kindergarten put together a picture album as a gift to their pastor, Dr. Yapel. Margaret Ann Raisi, George Frank, Nancy Jean Thomas, Shirley Alhart, Barbara Bower, Dickie Collins, Sylvia Helen Decker, Stennett Streambling, Janet Lee Phillips, Howard Jones, Carol Hogstein, Edward Dawkins, Arthur Eisbauer, Carol Shorts, Robert and Ronald Schwanke, Robert Graham, Shirley Miller, Barbara Jean Lurch, Virginia Potnam, and Mary Russell. Ministry also continued with the adults. Here's the 1940 Adult Department Night at LABC session, streamlining our church school program and sustaining enthusiasm. At the June meeting of the Board of Education, it was voted that LABC would participate in the Baptist Church School Advance of the Northern Baptist Convention. This program was a two-year effort to increase the interest and attendance in Sunday schools across the denomination. The Board also set aside the first two weeks of November for the Sunday school teachers to visit all of the students in their homes. Also in the fall of 1940, a major study of religious education was done by O. K. Johnson, who was then Sunday School Superintendent. He made some of the following recommendations, that the constitution of the church school should be revised, that the organization of the school is defective and needs to be revised, that curriculum should be evaluated, that there should be enrichment of religious programs in all phases of life, and that all departments need to increase qualified personnel. It's unclear how those recommendations were received, although across the following several years there's evidence that some changes were made based on those recommendations, and we do know that by January of 1941, a new program called Adult Development – Christianity in Life was instituted. Also, on Christmas Sunday morning in 1940, the children of the kindergarten traveled to Mount Olivet Church to give presents to the kindergarten children there. Here in 1941, we see that the junior high department published their own newsletter. And at the junior high parents' night, a pageant celebrating the 75th anniversary of LABC Sunday School was presented. Because LEBC began as a Sabbath school, it's older than the church itself, dating back to 1866. They included the dedication of the original land lot and the original chapel. 
On July 19th, Ms. Peace was informed by the combined board's action to discontinue her paid position as Director of Religious Education. And here we see the December 1941 Board of Christian Education that received year-end reports from all of the classes. Sadly, the rest of the 1940s has a great deal of information, but very little ephemera associated with it. A few of the highlights include that at the March meeting of the board, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Sunday Night Club were going along well. However, by June of 1941, some of the pledges were down significantly, and a restaffing needed to take place. By 1942, because of some changes in the neighborhood, Vacation Bible School was reduced one week. By 1943, a new point system was established for staying the entire church school period. Each student would receive a point each time they stayed in church and church school, and it was tallied by the end to create sort of a competition between the divisions. And in 1945, an extensive report on the church school library was made, and after many hours of work over several weeks, most of the books in the library had been catalogued. During these early years, from 1931 to 1961, it's possible to see the continued focus on Christian education at LABC. We pick up our journey in Christian education from 1931 to 1961 in April of 1944, when Miss Moore reported that attendance was showing a strong upturn since the new point system had started, and likewise there had been a very positive response church-wide to the new church school time. She also introduced what she titled a Grand and Specific Aims for LABC Church School 1944 to 1945 that included a revised budget, vacation Bible school, children's day planning, church school workers' convocation, rally day and promotion day, and a new leadership course. Shortly thereafter came the resignation of Earl Davis, chair of the church picnic committee, and he said this, under the present wartime conditions, we cannot justify ourselves in the outlay of gasoline, food, and other supplies that will be necessary for such an undertaking. Also, the result in publicity, in my opinion, will react unfavorably towards our church, as we are precedent setters in the church field. Much time will be taken away from war work by a good many people to carry through such a program, and at this time, it can ill be spared. As a result, the church picnic in 1944 and all departmental picnics were cancelled that year. In 1946, things picked up when Reverend Stanley Borden became assistant pastor at LABC. He reported on building changes that were nearing the completion at the end of summer and also suggested that the church school board adopt a committee that was forming a number of different committees, the Visitation Committee, the Personnel Committee, a Curriculum Committee, and a Teacher Training Committee. In May of 1948, the church school constitution was revised, making a significant change in how classes were organized. In October of 1948, the Newlyweds Club asked to begin a Sunday evening group. In January 1949, plans were laid to hold a 10-week teacher training program. It would begin with the kindergarten. Twenty parents would be contacted to see if they would allow their children to participate in a class that would be used as a model for the training. This class would be taught by the trainees under the supervision of the program's professional leadership. And even though the church school constitution had been revised in 1948, it was once again revised in 1949, and the major change was the definition of church school. The significance of this change is that it signals the beginnings of the integration between the Sabbath school, or church school, or Sunday school entity that had begun in 1865, and the church entity, which was founded in 1871. For 84 years, the two had operated cooperatively, but independently. 
and a few months later, at the August board meeting, it was noted that the kindergarten attendance had become too large for the space that was allotted to it. Therefore, that kindergarten class was divided into two classes. This was a precursor to what would come. The boomers were on their way and would necessitate significant changes well into the 1960s. And it was finally at the August 14, 1950 meeting that the funds of the Lake Avenue Memorial Church School were consolidated with the funds of the Lake Avenue Baptist Memorial Church and Society, and the two entities were officially made one. Here we have Miss Anderson, who was hired to help in the church school to be paid along with other student ministers. And by March of 1951, it was reported that Mr. Bentley's Saturday afternoon basketball program was flourishing. The intent of this program was to meet the needs for the neighborhood boys. In September of 1951, Mr. Borden introduced Donald Deere, a new student at CRDS, who came to work with the youth and taught the 11th and 12th grade mixed church school class. Here we have the 1951-1952 Board of Education. Here we have a picture of our nursery kids. It's also interesting that at the April meeting of the board, Mr. Borden reported that the church school broadcast on the second Sunday of each month was reaching an estimated 57,000 folk, which compared favorably to the big time broadcasts. From the beginning of the Fairport Baptist Home, Different entities within the church fostered relationships with that ministry, in particular the Women's Mission Society, but also the church school, which presented programs and visited residents. By January 1954, the idea of having a general council of representatives made up of a representative from each of the church boards or entities was raised. The council would act as a coordinating or planning agency for the discussion and problems as they arose. It was decided that the Board of Education would carry this idea forward to the other entities. This was beginning of what was called a church council. At the September 1954 board meeting, Dr. Hill announced that Reverend Herbert Grant had accepted the call to become the Director of Religious Education at LABC. Reverend Grant would begin his ministry in early 1955. One of his first tasks was to bring the children's story during worship on January 16th. This was the beginning of the children's story time in worship at LABC. At the April meeting, Dr. Bevan showed a film strip on the Year of Baptist Advancement, which was a program of the Northern Baptist Convention, which was a denominational-wide program, and he encouraged the board to participate. A motion was made and the program was heartily recommended to the advisory board of the church, and the program would take place from 1955 to 1956. Here we have a number of materials from that church year, including a list of major activities, a message to the teachers, responsibilities of the children's work committee, as well as an attendance advancement record, and an attachment that was used to keep track of families. Ms. Sita Allen reported to the board on all of those who attended the various camps during the summer. And on Sunday, October 30th, the annual service of dedication for church school workers was conducted during the regular morning service. And finally, we have an image here of a neighborhood service project. 